श्री के विश्वेश्वर रेड्डी फॉर्मर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट एंड फाउंडर ट्रस्टी जे के एम आर फाउंडेशन श्री वी राजगोपाल रेड्डी फॉर्मर एडिशनल सोलिसिटर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया ही हैज मेंटेड मेनी लाइक मी वाइल ही वॉज चेयरमैन ऑफ बार काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया ट्रस्ट आई वॉज पिक्ड अप बाई हिम अलॉन्ग विथ ट्वेंटी अदर लॉयर्स फ्रॉम द कंट्री टू रिसीव स्पेशल ट्रेनिंग at administrative staff college hyderabad i am ever be holden to his guidance to his mentorship and his contribution to the legal fraternity is is in history sri pvs reddy chief postmaster general telangana circle sri k r suresh reddy member parliament rajya sabha sri s niranjan reddy member parliament rajya sabha i can never forget to mention members of rajya sabha that's very critical i preside that house what was said by the former member of parliament i can have many caveats madam sangeeta reddy ji joint md apollo hospital and i remember the very first day when i had the good fortune to interact with her at a fiki program and she remembered her father in law so gloriously that i was quite keen to come to this function <laughs> distinguished audience i deem it a matter of pride privilege and pleasure for having been called upon to release a special indian postal cover commemorating the 100th anniversary of the late justice konda madhav reddy former chief justice of andhra pradesh and bombay high courts and former governor of maharashtra i congratulate the department of posts ministry of communications for their opportune initiative and as always for ensuring the impeccable aesthetics in the design which we all just noticed it is commendable that the department of post has been salient record keeper of india's inspirational and motivational legends and the present one is an instance today's initiative is a befitting recognition and tribute to legendary late justice konda madhav reddy i did not have the good fortune of having ever met him or even seen the legendary figure late justice konda madhav reddy but i can claim to know of him and know of him well justice reddy was born on 21st october 1923 that's the real date of birth was a visionary who made lasting contributions to india justice and education system justice reddy among his peers is remembered as a soft spoken thoughtful contemplative reasonable and fair with an innate sense of justice and thorough with his facts and law he was ever open to the other point of view something we all need to imbibe The central message of late Justice Konda Madhav Reddy's life was inclusive society. We must live the values and create values. He lived what he believed in, and founded several educational, social, and cultural organizations. He took inspiration from those who were before him, and encouraged young lawyers to work to their full potential. he was a contributor to several important judgments that shaped indian history and discourse the honorable governor has referred to two of his very significant judgments friends at a very personal level i resonate with justice reddy not only because of his association with the judiciary but also as someone who did not forget his roots a son of the soil 
Jesse Reddy remained a cultivator in his native village, Dharmasagar, until the end. Friends, this is a huge reflection on his personality. He exemplified simplicity, sublimity, modesty, and that is why we all are here. He is for us all, inspirational and motivational figure. As a Kisan Putra myself, I'm inspired by Jassi Reddy's efforts to alleviate rural struggles through his judgments. He gave a voice to those who were believed to be voiceless. He helped those who are the providers for Bharat, that is, our Kisans, our farmers. As Bharat approaches, friends, its centenary year, Bharat 2047, we must remember the ideals advocated and emphasized by Justice Reddy, service, justice, and compassion, as these must form the bedrock of an inclusive society and a vibrant democracy. As a matter of fact, these are a sense of our civilizational ethos. We must ever continue to believe in them and practice them. Friends, we are living in Amrit Khan. The world is witnessing India's progress across domains, the outcomes of which are impacting the lives of one-sixth of humanity, that is our Bharat. This is our Gaurav Kaal. We are laying the firm foundations for a developed Bharat to reclaim the glory that had made ours the leading nation for many centuries. It is soothing to note that all three organs of the state, the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature, are performing commendably and catalyzing the unprecedented rise of Bharat. When I come to judiciary, the legal landscape of Bharat has been undergoing great affirmative change in recent months, which will have tremendous positive impact on its progress and on the welfare of one-sixth of humanity. During the past decade, significant strides have been made in the judicial system emphasizing digitalization through the e-courts project and the national judicial data grid. There are not only, these have not only enhanced transparency and accessibility, but have resulted in reduction of pendency of cases. Major legal reforms initiated by judiciary included establishment of commercial courts, amendment to arbitration enactments, aiming for faster dispute resolution. Initiatives like National Legal Services Authority in Alsa has been taken to strengthen legal aid mechanisms for the underprivileged, the vulnerable sections of the society, ensuring impactful, effective justice to them. What is further noteworthy is that under our current Chief Justice, Dr. Chandrachud, the Supreme Court has taken several critical steps, including to bring justice to people in their own language, a revolutionary step that connects the people emotively to the highest court of the land. Supreme Court has gone paperless, and even the courts, including advocates, are performing paperless. 99% of district courts are connected no. to the high courts, and the high courts are moving towards paperless ecosystem. That is absolutely necessary in the times we live, the challenges we face. When we come to legislature, just a few days ago, friends, three new bills were introduced. They got the assent of the Honorable President of India, Srimati Draupadi Murgu, just two, three days back. The new laws, the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita, the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sahita, and the Bharatiya Sakshi Act have unshackled Indian criminal justice system from colonial legacy while keeping the focus on justice rather than punishment. Friends, it is monumental, revolutionary change from Dand Vidhan to Nyaya Vidhan. The passing of the Nari Shakti Vandana Adiniyam by Parliament was another just landmark in our legal landscape. 
This law marks a long overdue measure that will give our women their rightful space in our democracy and amplify the voice of one half of our society when they get representation vertically and horizontally to the extent of one third in Lok Sabha and state legislatures. We can add many more achievements to judiciary and legislature. I am only illustrating. Coming back to the executive, the most important transformative steps have been taken by government through public participation, highlighting the strength of our democracy and strengthening it spinally. From undertaking a nationwide Swachh Bharat, and I'm extremely proud, satisfied, noteworthy, that the foundation is engaged into this activity in a very meaningful, productive, and impactful manner. Swachh Bharat campaign bringing nearly a billion people online through a path-breaking digital public infrastructure push, and that, friends, has been appreciated globally, including by the World Bank. Our digital penetration has been so very impactful that our digital transactions in 2022 were four times the combined transactions of USA, UK, France, and Germany. Look at the acceptability that per data internet consumption of Bharat was more than that of USA and China taken together. Our UPI has been adopted even by countries like Singapore. Friends, we are witnessing a path-breaking public infrastructure push. The face of Bharat we are witnessing today is markedly different from what we have seen a decade ago. I don't want to go much into it. But just a decade ago, friends, when it comes to economy, we were part of Fragile 5. Now we are one of the five biggest economies at global level on way to becoming third largest global economy by the end of 2030. In the process, we have already overtaken Canada, Great Britain, and France, and we will soon overtake the economy that of Japan and Germany. In August 2023, what a proud moment for all of us. August 2023, we have declared as a space day. India landed its Chandrayaan-3 unmanned probe near the South Pole of Moon, becoming the first and the only country in the world to achieve this feat. We east on Moon, Tiranga, and Shiv Shakti Point. Friend G20, just a few days back, we handed over the presidency to a country in South America. We hosted the world's leading economies at G20 Leaders Summit in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi championed the African Union's admission as a permanent G20 member and amplified the voice of Global South on the international platform as never before. Both these historic developments indicate global rise of Bharat. European Union was already part of G20. European Union countries were those that had hegemony over African Union, Global South. Bharat became a country that included African Union in G20 and became very forceful voice of Global South. As the G20 chair, India sought to offer the world an alternative to status quo, a shift from GDP-centric to human-centric program. This is not a small achievement. Bharat gave to the world an idea. We have to be people-centric. We have to analyze parameters that go to make a man satisfied, happy. He or she can exploit his or her potential. And the world has accepted it. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reminded the world of what unites us rather than what divides us. Inclusive, ambitious, action-oriented, and decisive. These are the factors that mark actions of our Prime Minister. 
and this has been highly rewarding for the nation that we are now counted as the fastest growing large economy in the world. We are hot favorite destination of investment and opportunity as per World Bank. These four words of the Prime Minister defined our G20 presidency. Friends, technology has made inroads in our lives, in our work space, in our home space. We have to live with it. The advent of disruptive technologies is posing new challenges as well as opportunities. You will be happy to know that there was a time when we used to wait for other nations to develop technology. Then we used to look up to them to give us the technology. Then they will part with technology in a limited sense. So we were far behind. Presently, the scenario is that India has already positioned itself as one of the few countries, and the number is not in double digit. India is positioned as one of the few countries in the world that is charting its own course in terms of researching and harnessing such technologies. Friends, we have already directed our efforts on cutting edge technologies such as artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, quantum computing. And on quantum computing, we already have a quantum mission where there is already an allocation of 6,000 crores. It has enormous potential, and we are in the front league of nations doing this. Machine learning, that is so critical for a country like ours, that has a population of 1,4 billion. We are working on it. Internet of Things, 6G. When it comes to 6G, our progress is in two parts. The first part will be over from 2025 to 2030. We'll be engaging in.